The Rikinon 35mm f2.8 was the lens that came with the Ricoh AutoShot, a fixed lens automatic viewfinder camera that was made in Japan and released in 1964. The AutoShot was marketed as the most compact automatic full frame camera and according to this ad, it is just a puff larger than a pack of cigarettes. Back in 1964, the AutoShot had a price tag of $85. I found one on eBay for just 22 bucks. Besides being famous for its compact design, the AutoShot had one super cool feature. Its lens cover not only protected the lens when the camera was not in use, but it also doubled up as a flash unit. All you had to do is remove it from the front of the lens and insert it in the accessory shoe, and boom, you have a flash. According to the manual, the optical design of this Rikinon consists of four elements in three sections. Aperture ranges from f2.8 to f22. The diaphragm is made of two very unique aperture blades that create different shapes as you stop the lens down. This lens accepts filters with 34mm diameter. On the back, this lens is quite different. Once I removed it from the Ricoh AutoShot, it had no mount whatsoever. But adapting it to Sony Digital is quite easy. I came up with a modular system that gives me two different options. One allows me to use it for general purpose photography, and the other is great for close-up shots. For the first setup, I used an M25 to M42 adapter, an 8mm M42 extension tube, and an M42 to NEX slim adapter. First, I used some super glue that I applied to the back of the lens in order to attach the M25 to M42 adapter. Once the super glue was dry, all I had to do is take the 8mm extension tube and screw that to the back of the lens. And at the end, I just had to add the M42 to NEX slim adapter, and I was ready to use this wonderful vintage lens on my Sony camera. Since the original focus ring is at the front of the lens, I was still able to use it. With this setup, I can focus from infinity to approximately 1 meter. This setup is great, but I also wanted to have a solution for close-up photography. So for my second setup, I used an M42 to M42 12-17mm to focusing helicoid, which I simply swap with the 8mm extension tube whenever I want to get closer to my subject, and now I have a lens that I can focus from about 65 centimeters down to only 18 centimeters. The lens, with the adapter glued to it, weighs only 72 grams. The Rikinon 35mm f2.8 is perhaps the weirdest and definitely the smallest 35mm lens I own. The strangest thing about this lens is that it behaves in two very different ways. When focused at infinity on a full frame sensor, it suffers from softness along the edges and there's some strong vignetting, but what I love about this lens is its really good performance when used for close-up photography. As I mentioned earlier, I use it with an additional helicoid so I can get closer to my subject, and that's where this lens really shines. If you want to use it for landscape shots, I would recommend using it on a cropped sensor, which will eliminate most of its problems. My favorite ways to utilize it are close-up shots on full frame and medium distance shots on cropped sensor. The great thing about the Sony a7 III is that it allows me to switch between full frame and cropped sensor with a touch of a button, which is super convenient. When used for close-up photography, this Rikinon has very good center sharpness at f2.8, and sharpness becomes quite excellent all over as you stop it down. It produces really nice colors with neutral color rendition, and contrast is quite good even though not on par with later multi-coated lenses. If you're not a fan of lens flare, you probably would not like this lens because it flares like crazy, but I personally love how it behaves when I point it towards bright sources of light. There is some minor barrel distortion, but chromatic aberrations are simply non-existent, but the most amazing thing about this lens is its crazy bokeh. When shot wide open, you can expect nice and round out of focus lights, just like any other lens, but when stopped down, that's when the magic happens. 
And the odd thing is that with each additional f-stop, you get slightly different bokeh shapes. And they're not what you would expect at all. They're spear or arrowhead-like, and they become more and more triangular as you step the lens down. When I first saw this, I was super excited because lenses that give you triangular bokeh are very rare and usually quite expensive, and the fact that this one is so cheap and easy to adapt makes it a real gem. If you love experimenting with vintage lenses that have unique rendering and lots of character, you will definitely enjoy this unusual 35mm lens. But if you want a do-it-all lens with perfect stats, this Rikinon will not be right for you. This lens definitely has some shortcomings, but if you know how to work around them, you can make some really fun photographs. I shot a little test clip for those of you curious about its video capabilities, and as you can see, it actually performed quite well. For those of you who would like to try this Rikinon, I decided to put together a few notes that will help you adapt it to digital. First thing of course is to get yourself a Ricoh AutoShot, which you can find for super cheap. Then you'll need to open up the film door, which is done by pushing this lever here on the side. Once the film door is open, you will see that the lens is held by four screws. Since so much time has passed, they can be a little tough to unscrew and I had to use some nail polish remover before I was able to unscrew them. Once you've removed all four screws from the back, you can simply pull the lens out. Now the lens is only held by one thin wire. Just cut the wire and the lens is yours. The next step is to open up the lens shutter. First you need to make sure that the lens is set to bulb mode. If you turn the lens upside down, you will notice that on one side of the rear element is the shutter cocking spindle and on the other the shutter release lever. Now with the help of some needle nose pliers, turn the shutter cocking spindle clockwise. Now when you push the shutter release lever, the shutter opens up, but it only opens up halfway. But because we want it to open all the way, simply use the pliers again to turn the spindle counterclockwise and now the shutter opens up completely and stays open. But be careful when you do this because the spindle is very tiny and can be easily damaged. Now you can use the aperture dial over here by moving from left to right and you'll get to see those cool shapes that the diaphragm creates when you open it and close it. But the only issue is that the line that indicates your f-stop no longer matches with the numbers on the lens. Now it only goes between B and Auto, where B acts as f2.8 and Auto becomes f22. And everything in between is simply a guess. It's a minor inconvenience, but it's really not that big of a deal. Then simply follow the instructions from the earlier part of the video, and you can have a really fun and super weird 35mm lens. For materials and parts, check out the description below. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time here at Vintage Optics.